The first time that Mitt Romney ran for office was in 1994. He ran for the U.S. Senate from Massachusetts. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I have since the time that my mom took that position when she ran in 1970 as a U.S. Senate candidate. I believe that since Roe v. Wade has been the law for 20 years, that we should sustain and support it. Look, I was an independent during the time of Reagan Bush. I'm not trying to return to Reagan Bush. I want universal coverage. I want everyone in Massachusetts and in this country to have insurance. Despite trying his best to run to the center that year to appear to be a moderate, uh, Mr. Romney even promised that he was to the left of his opponent, Ted Kennedy, on the issue of gay rights in that election. Uh, Despite that Herculean ideological stretching, Mr. Romney lost that race badly to Senator Kennedy. But, you know, it was not those those culture war issues, those social issues that are credited uh, with having made the difference in that election. The race didn't end up being much about health insurance or even or not uh, e- even whether or not Mitt Romney or Ted Kennedy were liberal or conservative on abortion or gay rights or gun rights or anything else like that. Observers of that race say that Mitt Romney lost that badly. Look at that. He lost by 17 points to Ted Kennedy in that race more because of this issue. Mitt Romney's ads claim he created jobs, but what's the record? His firm bought a company in Holyoke and moved its headquarters to Dallas, Texas. Romney's firm bought a company called SCM, fired all 350 workers, told some they could reapply at a 25% pay cut. But many who were pregnant or older were denied jobs. And Romney made $11 million in two years. Mitt Romney, he's misled us twice. With negative ads distorting Senator Kennedy's record and with phony claims about his own. I would like to say to Mitt Romney, if you think you'd make such a good senator, come out here to Marion, Indiana and see what your company has done to these people. We had no rights anymore. They cut the wages. We no longer had insurance. Basically cut our throats. I'd like to say to the people of Massachusetts, if you think it can't happen to you, think again. Because we thought it wouldn't happen here either. Mitt Romney. I don't mean to be callous, but there are people all over the world who would love a job flipping hamburgers in America. Romney. In business, he specialized in low-wage jobs, but made $11 million for himself in two years. Now he favors policies to benefit the wealthy at the expense of working families. Romney favors a $100 billion tax cut for the wealthiest 1% of Americans, and billions more in other tax breaks for the rich. Romney. Trickle-down economics and a millionaire's tax cut. Whose side is he on? Those were the ads that Ted Kennedy used against Mitt Romney in 1994. And specifically, those folks from Indiana, they had a whole series of ads like those ones from Indiana, highlighting what Mitt Romney's Bain Capital did to the people who worked at some of these companies that Romney and Bain personally got rich off of. Ted Kennedy just devastated Mitt Romney in 1994 in that Senate race with those ads. So Ted Kennedy went back to the Senate after he won that. Mitt Romney went back to Bain, uh, and he did his stint at the Salt Lake City Olympics. And then when he decided that he wanted to run again for public office, Mr. Romney ran in 2002 for Massachusetts governor. He ran against a Democratic opponent named Shannon O'Brien. And Shannon O'Brien, no surprise, decided to run against Mitt Romney in part by updating the same attacks that had been so devastating against Romney eight years earlier in the Ted Kennedy Senate race. And instead of the AMPAD Indiana paper mill that that Ted Kennedy used in those ads against Mr. Romney in 94, eight years later in 2002, Shannon O'Brien decided to use the GST steel mill experience against Mr. Romney. GST steel mill was a mill that had been in operation in Kansas City since 1888. Before Bain got a hold of it, the end result was the mill shut down, 750 jobs lost. The employees did not get the severance pay or the health insurance they had been promised. Their pension benefits got cut by hundreds of dollars a month. On the pension thing specifically, the federal government had to pitch in tens of millions of dollars to bail out the workers that Bain cut off through a pension guarantee program. But hey, Bain made money off it. Mitt Romney made money off it. Shannon O'Brien hit Mitt Romney with that story in 2002. Newt Gingrich hit Mitt Romney with that story this year. It was part of that whole King of Bane thing that Newt Gingrich deployed against Mr. Romney. Rick Perry even hit Mitt Romney with that this past year. President Obama's campaign hit Mr. Romney with it, too. They issued $125 million of bonds. 
And out of that $125 million debt, they paid themselves almost $40 million. It was like a vampire. He came in and sucked the life out of us. Every time Mitt Romney has been hit with political criticism for that economic bomb that he and Bain Capital dropped on those steel workers, in part leaving the taxpayers to clean up the mess, every time he has been hit by that, his response has been the same. The response is, I wasn't there. I didn't do it. Yes, Mr. Romney said he made the initial decisions about that company, but you can't blame him for how it turned out because he was gone by the time it blew up. He was gone from Bain after 1999. He went to go run the Olympics. He was gone from Bain after 1999, and the bankruptcy didn't happen until 2001. So you can't make him answer for that bankruptcy. You can't make him answer for anything at Bain after 1999. That's what he has been saying this year about that criticism. That was also his response to that criticism from his Republican primary rivals who were hitting him with it last year. That was also his response in 2002 when Shannon O'Brien used that against him 10 years ago. I wasn't there. I didn't do it. I don't have to answer for anything at Bain after 1999. I left. You know that at the time that plant closed, I was at the Olympics. And when I left Massachusetts to go run the Olympics and left my organization, I was out there full time. As a matter of fact, as I recall, you brought a challenge against me and your party did to say that I wasn't qualified to be governor because I was out in Utah. Well, actually, you were right. I was out in Utah full time. I had no responsibility for management at Bain Capital. Our lawyer has pointed that out to you. The executives at, uh, at the uh, steel company have but pointed that out to you. But you still haven't answered the question. You know, you keep asking new questions, so I'm trying to answer them as, quick, as quickly as I can. I asked one and the, question. And the, and the answer is, I was at the Olympics running the games. That was the job I had, and therefore I was not running Bain Capital, and therefore not responsible for the actions of Bain Capital when I left. I am not responsible for the actions of Bain Capital when I left, and I left in 1999. Mr. Romney has made that same argument in response to criticism over a whole lot of things that his company did. The Washington Post last month ran this rather devastating story on Mr. Romney and Bain investing in firms that helped American companies ship jobs overseas. Mr. Romney's company investing in and even managing companies that called themselves pioneers in outsourcing American jobs to other countries. Again, like with that steel plant, Mr. Romney's response was, I wasn't there. I didn't do it. I don't have to answer for anything at Bain after 1999. I left. The Romney campaign even asked for a retraction of that Washington Post story. They took a very high-profile meeting with the Washington Post, saying that story's wrong. I wasn't there. I didn't do it. I don't have to answer for anything at Bain after 1999. I left. Kind of sounds like a really good defense, right? I mean, if the guy didn't work there when this stuff happened, how can he be held accountable for what his company did after he left? Well, it maybe should have been a sign when the Washington Post did not retract its story about Mr. Romney and those outsourcing firms, despite the campaign's very public demands. Over the last few weeks, David Korn at Mother Jones Magazine and Josh Marshall at Talking Points Memo started reporting that this seemingly airtight defense, this, this trap door that Mitt Romney has been jumping through in every political contest he's been in since Ted Kennedy beat him so badly 18 years ago using Mr. Romney's business record, this escape hatch he's been using to evade criticism for some of the most politically damaging damage that Bain wrecked on American workers and communities while getting very rich themselves in the process, that defense of his, that I wasn't there, I didn't do it, I left in 1999. Maybe that defense is not true. Today, the Boston Globe leads with this story. Look, Romney stayed longer at Bain. Firm's 2002 filings identify him as CEO, though he said he left in 1999. According to the Globe's reporting, SEC filings show Mr. Romney listed as the sole stockholder, chairman of the board, chief executive officer, and president of the firm, not just in 1999 when he says he left, but also in 2000 and in 2001 and in 2002. In 2001 and 2002, he got paid six figures for being an executive of the firm during the time period for which his defense against the most potent political attacks ever used against him has for years now been, I wasn't there. I didn't do it. I don't have to answer for this. I left. It doesn't seem like he left. 
Today's report in the Boston Globe shared the bylines of Callum Borchers and Christopher Rowland. Joining us now is Christopher Rowland. He's the paper's Washington bureau chief. Mr. Rowland, thanks very much for being here. Congratulations on your, uh, your, your scoop today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know a lot more about uh, the story and the documents on which it's based than I do. So I have to ask you if I got anything wrong there, uh, as far as you can tell, in terms of that history or, or what you've just reported today. Is there anything I should correct? No, uh, but basically the rough outlines are, as you say, I mean, uh, you know, Mitt Romney has used uh, his departure date of 1999 from Bain uh, as his first line of defense for a variety of attacks by the Obama administration and by Democrats, you know, uh, before that for years. Really, he's uh, this has been his his main talking point when confronted with things like bankruptcies and layoffs and a lot of the difficult things that Bain did over the years. Uh, So what's really interesting now is, though, when you see this paper trail in the SEC documents that list him uh, throughout a variety of documents as president, CEO, chairman of Bain Capital, and as uh, owner, a sole owner of a variety of investment partnerships, uh, including five that were that were created in 2002. So the paper trail that they created uh, over those three years really paints a totally different picture. Of, of Mitt Romney's involvement with the firm. The, if you look at the paperwork alone, it shows that he was the man in charge. Now, that's a big startling change from uh, the way that they've described it over the years. Now, the, the, the key is, is that they, he indeed did leave, and he was indeed in Salt Lake. So, uh, you know, to a certain extent, this, uh, he's legally in charge. Uh, I don't think that you know, the Globe and, and other reporting is not saying that he was in the boardroom on a daily basis at Bain calling the shots. But certainly uh, these records show that he was in charge. He had legal responsibility. He was uh, the man with oversight responsibility for the company. Well, is it is it legal or I guess more broadly, is it sort of considered kosher in business terms to be listed on SEC filings as a firm's sole stockholder, chairman of the board, chief executive and president? While you've got partnership agreements, you've got these entities starting up new entities in business. But to actually have that person have no role whatsoever in that firm, is that is that legally sound? Well, certainly there's a variety of experts and former SEC commissioners and people like that uh, and lawyers in this field who say that it's it's not entirely kosher. These SEC documents do matter. Uh, they are material to the operation of, of a variety of, of, of companies that uh, are, are buying and trading shares. And, and the, you know, but one of the keys is that Bain Capital is not a publicly traded company. So it's a little different than misleading investors about who your CEO is. You know, mom and pop on Main Street can't buy stock in Bain Capital. But what it does do is it paints a far different picture than was the, uh, that was purported to be the reality that, you know, that there was a, a different band of people running that company. And so these, these documents are throughout the SEC filings. Some people have said that, uh, and, and the Romney people suggest sort of on background, although they haven't come out and asserted this directly, that these are, it's more of a technicality and kind of a legality and that there was a sort of a legacy filings. But when you see five companies, you know, five investment partnerships being created by Mitt Romney in 2002, brand new, uh, it, it sort of doesn't sound like legacy filings or leftovers or boilerplate that just happened to find its way in there. There's been some discussion today about whether or not the Romney folks uh, were looking for a correction or a retraction on the article. As I understand it, there's no correction or retraction forthcoming from the Globe. They, their specific complaint, what they said was, the article is not accurate. Governor Romney left Bain Capital in February 1999 to run the Olympics and had no input on investments or management of companies after that point. Let me just ask you whether or not you have reported anything either way way about whether or not he had direct investment uh, or management of companies after that point. It seems like that's sort of beside the point of what it is that you documented today. Right. I mean, our, our story was really limited to looking at the discrepancies and the contradictions in this in the paperwork. So if you look at what the SEC filings show that, you know, Bain on paper was calling Mitt Romney their president and their leader and their chief executive after 1999 up until 2002. On the other hand, they filed this financial disclosure report 
uh, in the most recent one and again in 2007 that he left Bain Capital in 1999, that he actually retired. So it's really difficult, to, I think, for most laymen and most people and in the political sphere as well to understand how both these things can be true. You know, how can you retire from a company in 1999, but then remain as president, CEO and chairman? So I think that's one of the discrepancies that I mean, we're reporting. And that, that's really the, the crux of our story. And the Romney people, as they did ask for a correction, weren't, they're not getting one because, I mean, they haven't been able to show that any of our reporting was inaccurate. They don't like the take of the story and they don't like the, 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 the way it looks. And that's been the difficulty for them. Uh, one of the things that's really interesting is in our reporting that we've uncovered is that uh, in Mitt Romney himself in 2002, I think you alluded to when he was uh, the, the Democrats tried to get him off the ballot in Massachusetts in 2002 by challenging his residency. And during the hearings that uh, that challenged his residency, he successfully beat that uh, allegation. But he said that uh, I uh, he said during his testimony that I took a leave of absence. So even his own frame of mind in 2002, as he looked back over the previous three years, was a leave of absence. It wasn't retirement. But now you fast forward 15 years and you look at what they're saying now in his financial disclosure form, for example, it says retired. So they've really sort of evolved to where what even that they've said themselves and what the candidate has said himself about that uh, his frame of mind during that time. Christopher Rowland, the Washington Bureau Chief of the Boston Globe. Thank you for helping us uh, sort through this. And thanks for your reporting on this. It's nice to have you here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It is remarkable, that evolution. Isn't it just uncanny to the way it always evolves so that he gets credit for things that are seen as good and he gets no responsibility for anything that's seen as bad? It's uncanny the way that wins around. All right, Mudcat Saunders is here tonight for the interview. I'm really looking forward to that. And we've got a rah-rah, sis-boomba, good news, best new thing in the world today. It's all still ahead. Stay with us.